Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is a J Man Time and today I have a video on some rare Turkish military aircraft from the last 80 years, 80 plus years to be exact. When I say military aircraft, I'm mostly talking about fighters and bomber projects that have been developed by the Turkish aeronautical industries since at least the late 1930s to now. Now many of you have heard that Turkey is developing a new stealth fighter aircraft, a fifth generational fighter known as the TAI TFX. And this is supposed to be the Turkish answer to the American F-35 Lightning, the F-22 Raptor, and the Russian Su-57, and the Chinese J-20 slash Xinjiang J-31, which are all fifth gen fighters that are already entering service now as of 2021. But Turkey is also developing their own fifth gen fighter. And this aircraft here is the first fifth gen fighter that is to be developed by the Turks. But this isn't Turkey's first time developing a fighter aircraft or any kind of military aircraft to be exact. Turkey has been developing fighter aircraft and military aircraft like bombers and ground attack aircraft since the 1930s to be exact. Although almost none of them have entered service at all and only a few have made it past the prototype stage. So let's go over some of the rare Turkish military fighter aircraft, bomber aircraft, and even some ground attack aircraft that have been developed since the 1930s. Now the first Turkish military aircraft, the first true fighter aircraft, the first true bomber aircraft project was developed by a man named Nuri Demirag. And he was a, a Turkish aircraft developer or aeronautical engineer from the 1930s and 40s. Now he was born in 1886 and died in 1957. He is credited with designing Turkey's first true fighter project known as the Nur Demirag Nu D-40 and a second version known as the Nu D-40B. And these are two fighter project, two fighter bomber projects that were developed between 1938 and 1940, although neither one of them made it past the design stage. Now the first version known as the NUD-40 was a proposed piston powered fighter bomber aircraft that was developed in 1939. It was actually submitted to the Germans as Turkey at this point did not have the manufacturing facilities to manufacture any kind of military grade aircraft. Now keep in mind this took place before World War II began in September of 1939. He had actually sent his blueprints and some of his test models to the German Fokker Wolf Company or the FW Company, the same company known for developing many of Germany's famous fighter aircraft from the Second World War, like the FW 190 or the Butcher Bird from the Second World War, a German fighter aircraft from World War II. Now this first aircraft, the Nord Demirag D now, NUD-40 was a proposed piston-powered bomber. The range of the aircraft is unknown as it was never tested beyond the proposed stage and the flight ceiling of the aircraft is largely unknown. Neither is the main armament of this plane. The plane resembles the German Fokkerwolf or Fokkerwolf FW-189, which was a German light tactical bomber and ground support aircraft used by the German Luftwaffe in the Second World War. And this project was designed in 1939 and was submitted to Fokker Wolf in the same year. Now later on, he came up with a second version, which was a pusher type canard based fighter aircraft known as the Nord Demirag DUNUD. 40B, and this was a pusher type fighter aircraft that was designed on paper at least in 1940, um, just at the very start of the Second World War, at least in Europe, as the war started in September 1939, and by 1940, the war had reached the borders of Belgium and France. Now, this second aircraft resembled a Dutch fighter known as the Fokker D-23, which was a joint Dutch-American fighter project from 1938 and 1940. In fact, it was still in development in 1940 when the Netherlands fell to the Germans in 1940. 
Its speed, range, and armament is unknown, although it's some sources state that this aircraft was supposed to be armed with at least two to four heavy machine guns, either 50 caliber machine guns or 20 millimeter auto cannons. Now, both of these projects were submitted to Fokker, but the Germans didn't take them too seriously, but they did photograph them and archive them. And that's where these photographs come from. These are photographs of the, these are photographs of Noor Demirog's proposed Turkish fighter bomber and light bomber aircraft projects from 1939, 1940. And these were the first true Turkish military warplanes developed for the Turkish Air Force. Now, they weren't the first Turkish military planes in general. The Turks did develop trainer aircraft and even some transport aircraft, but these were the first true combat aircraft developed for the Turkish Air Force, although neither of these made it past the proposed stage. The first Turkish bomber project was developed by the Turkish Aeronautical Association, also known as the Turk Hara Karumu. And this first bomber aircraft also started off as a light transport aircraft known as the THK-5. And it was developed by the Turkish Aeronautical Association. This was a limited production piston powered bomber light transport aircraft, but could also be used as an air ambulance. It was developed in 1944 and was put into limited production in the same year. This aircraft, uh, no, this aircraft weighed about 1,900 kilograms or a little over 4,000 pounds. The speed of the aircraft was not very fast at just 205 kilometers per hour or 127 miles per hour. The aircraft had a range of just 650 kilometers or 400 miles and had a flight ceiling of just 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet. Only 13 of these THK-5 bomber light transport and air ambulances were built for the Turkish Air Force and at least three of these were also sold to Denmark. So Denmark became one of the first customers of a Turkish made military plane, a bomber slash light transport from 1944, the Turk Hara Karumu THK-5. After World War II, the Turkish Aeronautical Association also developed several other experimental warplanes for the Turkish Air Force, although none of these made it past the prototype stage. The first of these was the Turk Har Kurumu THK-11. The THK-11 was an experimental piston-powered pusher-type ground attack aircraft. This was a research aircraft in which the Turks were researching ground attack aircraft. And this aircraft was developed between 1946 and 1947. It was actually unveiled in 1948-1949 at a French aeronautical air show in Paris, France in 1948-1949. The THK-11's main armament is unknown but was most likely either a 20 to 30 millimeter cannon as those were popular at the time, especially during the Second World War and the years after World War II also. The weight of the aircraft was just 1,150 kilograms or 2,535 pounds and the aircraft had a speed of just 201 kilometers per hour or 125 miles per hour. The aircraft's maximum flight ceiling was just 3,500 meters or 1,000 or 11,500 feet and only one prototype was built in 1946 and tested in 1947. Now this aircraft was severely underpowered. It only had a speed of just 125 miles per hour and it never made it past the prototype stage. Now the Turks did try to find some investors in this aircraft project. And that, was, that is why this plane was showcased at the Paris Air Show in 1948-1949. But they did manage to find any investors and the project was canceled only a year later in 1949-1950. This was Turkey's first attempt at developing a ground attack aircraft, the THK-11. Now in 1947, the same aeronautical association, Turk Hara Karumu, came up with another experimental aircraft. This time, an experimental piston or turbojet powered tailless research flying wing or flying glider wing type aircraft, also known as simply a flying wing in the Western world. 
and this aircraft was known as the THK-13. The THK-13 was a research aircraft from 1947 to 1948. Its main armament is unknown because it was just a research plane, so the actual final prototype, the final prototype of this plane was never completed. The aircraft weighed just a mere 520 kilograms or 1,146 pounds. That's because this plane was mostly made out of wood, aluminum, and some canvas. So this was a very lightly constructed plane. The aircraft's speed was only 106 kilometers per hour, or just 65.8 miles per hour. The reason being, as the final aircraft or the final model did not have its original piston engine or turbojet engine. This plane was supposed to be fitted with a piston engine or a turbojet engine, which would have made it a pusher type flying wing or experimental flying wing aircraft. But the engine was never installed, so this plane was basically just a well-designed glider at the end of the day, and it had to be towed in order to get it to fly. The test went well for the most part, but during the last test, the aircraft was damaged during a landing, and so the engine and other components were never installed or modified into this THK-13 prototype. So in 1948, the project was almost canceled, but in 1949, it was actually shown at the, at the Paris Air Show along with the THK-11. But the Turks could not find any investors and the project was canceled in 1949. If it had been developed, this could have been Turkey's first flying wing attempt at a stealth aircraft. Now remember, during the Second World War, both the Allies and the Axis powers also experimented with a variety of different flying wing type of fighter, bombers, and stealth aircraft in the Second World War. This was Turkey's attempt at developing an experimental research flying wing with the potential to become either a fighter, a bomber, or even a stealth aircraft. But the project was canceled in 1949 and the THK-13 ended up being one of Turkey's first and only flying wing projects of the 20th century. The last aircraft the last a really well-designed aircraft developed by the Turks before Turkey began importing large numbers of NATO warplanes, mostly from the US and Europe, was the Turk Hara Kurumu THK-16. The Mahmacek, the Mahmacek was a Turkish experimental turbojet-powered jet trainer and ground attack aircraft that was developed between 1952 and 1957. The main armament of the aircraft is unknown as it never made it past the proposed stage. The aircraft was to weigh just a meager 1,100 kilograms or 2,424 pounds, 25 pounds. The aircraft's maximum speed was supposed to be 430 kilometers per hour or 270 miles per hour. The range was supposed to be 710 kilometers per hour, or 440 miles per hour, and it was supposed to have a flight ceiling of 12,000 meters, or 39,000 feet. Only one prototype was said to have been made, but I haven't seen any photographs of it. Now, this aircraft here was supposed to be Turkey's first jet trainer. In the 1950s, Turkey had begun importing American-made jet aircraft like the F-86 Sabre. And this here was supposed to be Turkey's attempt at developing their own jet trainer aircraft with the potential hopes of developing their first ever fighter aircraft or jet fighter aircraft. Now the project was canceled in 1957 after Turkey began importing or began importing American-made jet trainer aircraft and some European-made jet trainer aircraft. And as a result, the Turkish Air Force saw no need for any new experimental Turkish-made jet trainer aircraft, with the, the THK-16 being the only one that was in development at the time. As a result, the project was canceled, and the Turkish Aeronautical Association soon began developing sporting aircraft instead. They had dropped out of the military developmental phase or development research and had begun developing civilian sail planes and other sorts of commercial planes to be sold both in Turkey and on the foreign market. And for a long time, Turkey did not develop any fighter aircraft, bombers, or, or military stealth aircraft at all. So this new Turkish fighter 
the TAI, TAF, TX, the TFX project is the first real Turkish military grade aircraft or fighter aircraft in this case since the days of the THK-16. And so there you have it. This was the history of some of Turkey's early military grade aircraft, fighters, bombers, and some rare research aircraft. So what do you all think of these? Which are your favorite? Obviously mine is the THK-13, as that is the first time I've ever heard that Turkey had ever developed a flying wing. But what are your thoughts on this? Please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.